And we just did this uh, Mazda Protege 5 with the blue alligators. This one, winter tires with the fast, I forgot what they're called, blue on blue. Oh, fast orbit. So we have here this brand new GLC uh, for Q800 Pro dash cam. Uh, rear camera is pretty standard. Mercedes kind of done this hatchback design for a while. The front camera is a little bit different on the 2020. Uh, with the facelift, they've kind of redesigned the module up front here a little bit. So how we have it is the front camera is now mounted off to the passenger side. And the reason why is this module now has a lens that fits right here. So you can't block it. Um, you can kind of see the marking there. Uh, we could put the camera kind of to the left of this, but because the Q800's wires come to the right side, um, it's kind of a little bit awkward putting in the middle. So it's a little bit more discreet up top here. Um, from the driver's seat, you can still see the flashing red light, so you know it's working. But uh, a little bit different, yeah, with this facelift. I think the C-Class and the GLC both got this. And I'm thinking most Mercedes going forward is going to go with this design anyways. So just something to note. And then for power, we have a fuse box down here under the kick panel. And here we have this gorgeous one owner Cayenne Turbo. Uh, it's a 958 generation. So we've got the Bose amplifier, fiber optic amp retention module, and obviously steering control retention. So you can see when I hit the volume like that, I can also skip radio stations. Some of the buttons don't work like a mute button because most new radios don't have a mute wire. For this car, we put in the Kenwood DNR876S. Uh, that's got wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay and also built-in Garmin navigation. Uh, right now, obviously, inside our garage, we don't have any reception. But you can see this very familiar Garmin uh, navigation interface. Very user-friendly, just like any Garmin portable GPS you've ever used. But obviously with a 7-inch touchscreen now. Uh, for an even easier interface, the... Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, Google Maps interface would probably be better, but uh, GPS is great, you know, in some areas where you don't have cell reception. Super clear display on this one, and we also have a backup camera. For this car, we actually have two backup cameras. We got one down here and one up here with the R20X, and we also have an F800 Pro. We've done a, a lot of stuff to this car over the years. The R20 X, the customer requested to have it pointing straight down so you can park super close with the bumper. This one with the uh, factory or the double bin screen, we have it going a little bit further down the road. So you can get two different angles on this car. And we're doing a rally armor install on this uh, Honda Civic sedan, along with some red alligators. That's the factory mud flap. And the beauty with the uh, rally armors is that you have a pretty sturdy bracket that reuses the factory holes. So we don't have to drill any new holes into the fender liner. And a sportier look. There's the F800 Pro. Not sure if you can see it there. Front and rear. And we have this brand new Sienna in for a backup sensor install. Actually also a front sensor install. Uh, as far as sensor positioning, it's pretty easy because um, Toyota actually marks these bumpers. Because I guess with the XLEs and the Limiteds, you're going to have factory sensors. This is an SE, so it doesn't have these. But um, you can see the mark there, 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 and there. This car is brand new, as you can see, with only 300 kilometers on the clock. Uh, it does have a backup camera and JBL system, leather seats, but doesn't have sensors. There is the sensors. And now we have the front ones in. Looking pretty factory with the white. And you can see that side. On the right side, we've got the little board there so it's it's going off a little bit um, and then the back one the back one doesn't activate until you're in reverse uh, 
Um, but the front one is on all the time. And we have this uh, EK Civic. They did the Pioneer radio and a JBL Club install. Very similar to the CRV we did not too long ago. Uh, JBL Club, the this is the shallow mount one, fits perfectly in there. We tried it with the 620s, that's the normal uh, standard size, six and a half, uh, and it hits the, the back a little bit. So we didn't want to cut the crap out of it. So we ran uh, with the shallow mount. And then in here we have that Pioneer radio. Just turn it on. This is just our basic uh, MVH S322. Got Bluetooth. That's the most important thing these days, really. USB also for charging, aux input. USB is great because then you don't have to use one of those, uh, you know, charger things down here. Because it's a one one and a half app. It's it's not like fast charge or anything, but it's it's kind of nice. Um, and then yeah, the mic's just right there. And if you're worried about it getting stolen, which you know, let's face it, it's a '97 Civic, you can always take out the faceplate like that. And we have this Audi S5 Sportback in for the APR intercooler. We've done a lot to this car already. Um, we're doing a race chip GTS on there, give it a little bit more power. Got HR spacers all around. H&R springs all around. We went with the springs because this car's got adaptive suspension, so we want to keep that all working. Uh, we got the 15 mils in the back, and I think it's a 12 and a half mil in the front. Let's see the H&Rs. And of course, a five window tint for this one. This is actually, um, he's got a baby seat back here and his daughter complains about the sun sometimes, so good to have a bit of window tint back here. Have here a brand new Hyundai Accent with the VFO A119. Hardwired to the fuse box on the driver's side. This camera can do parking mode, has built in GPS, just doesn't have Wi Fi. Uh, if you want to upgrade to Wi Fi, you can go with the uh, VFO A129 Pro. It's a very similar looking camera but it has 4K and uh, obviously the Wi Fi. And you can add a rear camera to the A129, whereas with the A119, we only have uh, the front camera. Hyundai's always come pretty nicely equipped with LED headlights, LED accents, uh, alloy wheels. Even though it's just a cloth seat, you know, not too fancy of a car, but really nicely built. Here we have this 2015 Pilot, the last of the second gen Pilots. Uh, doing a lighting upgrade for both the low beam and the fog lights and the U1000 think for a dash cam there. This one is a little bit tricky because unlike the new pilot, it's got a rear window that flips open like that um, So we're gonna play around where we can mount the rear camera I'm thinking right here it says unlike the forerunners We actually do have a spot that we can kind of mount a camera to uh, we could put on the glass, but then you have to run it it's kind of along this dangly dang thing. And it's uh, kind of ugly. There's the Honda Pilot now with the uh, CLD Kong, low beam and the fog light. And then we have the U1000 here, recording in parking mode. And I'll show you the rear here. So we have the camera stuck to this uh, plastic panel here. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these. That's how we do it on the Highlanders as well. Um, so no issue as far as interference with this going up and down. And we don't have an ugly dangling wire. Because unlike the factory cord here, it doesn't you know shrink up when you close this. It's just going to dangle. So it'll look pretty bad. Whereas this way, um, it doesn't matter if this window is open or closed. The camera still records. And even if you're loading bigger items, you don't have to worry about knocking it because it gets out of the way when you swing the trunk up. And here we have this 2010 Honda Pilot. We just did the iData Start uh, HC2352AC remote starter on. This kit comes with a two-way remote, two actually two-way remotes. 
Uh, but you can also start it with the lock button. So how that works, you hit the lock button three times on the factory fob. Funny enough, this is the lock button or the remote that is on all of iData's uh, marketing materials is the Honda key. Two, three, like that. Then it will start. And you can also use the lock button to cancel it. So I think you go one. This this fob is really weak. <laughs> I gotta get closer. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> the fob is too weak. So I'll just go over what we installed. It's the HC2352AC. We don't use this analog harness at all. Uh, with these newer cars and very popular models like this Pilot and other, you know, Hondas, GMs, Fords, uh, a lot of other makes are actually covered by iData Start's T harness series. What this means is we don't need to do any hard wiring for the most part. We have to do a little bit for this car for the uh, auto lights, but um, this simplifies the install process a lot, saves you a lot of labor costs, and you don't need to do any uh, kind of cutting wires or too much of that. Now, with this kit, this is their top of the line HC2352, which means you get two two way fobs. This one goes for, I think, 320 plus tax um, versus the base kit that has no remotes for 180. So you're paying about 140 bucks, you get two two-way remotes. Now, if you don't really care about the two-way function, you can get the one-way, the 1152. Uh, now that one is only 230 plus tax, so you're only paying $50 more to get the two one-way remotes. You're getting way better range and it's only $25 a remote. And a remote's nice and small like this. That's it again next to the factory Honda fob. Um, so really nice thin remote and you know these are modular right so you can always do something else with it put a drone to it um, you know if you break these it's easy to replace them it's cheap to replace them it's not like a factory fob where uh, if you do break it or whatever you can't really fix it now well you can but it's very expensive to get a new factory fob um, let's say for example your factory remote um, the, the key works, but you can't lock and unlock from it anymore. This will take care of that too. This is a 2019 Audi RS3. Um, customer just picked this car up about two weeks ago and already got hit and run twice, as you can see there. Uh, so we got with the Q800 Pro in a parking mode right there. Uh, the way we have it mounted is so that the lens is pretty much centered um, and then we have a rear camera over there, right in the middle. This car's got the black optics package, really nice. This is a 1993 LE edition Miata. The next jackpot is $70 million. Uh, customer wanted a new radio, obviously with the Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, this is the full package with the rear uh, headrest speakers. And so we got the Bluetooth with the mic up here. And customer was concerned that, you know, is this whole install reversible? Because, of course, uh, it's got collector plates on there. If you ever didn't want to apply that blue <laughs> LED radio, is not going to fly. Uh, clearly, it's not factory. Um, but yeah, no issue there. We're using harnesses and there's no cutting of wires. So everything is fully reversible. This is a 2006 Pontiac Solstice. Um, customers had it since brand new, I guess. And uh, putting in a new radio for it. This is the factory kind of CD aux. Not bad for the time, honestly, but uh, you know, that's 14 years ago. So we're putting in a whole new uh, Apple CarPlay Android Auto system with a capacitive touchscreen. And there's the Alpine ILX 650. Uh, for these cars, we need a chime retention module that's behind there. So that's why from here, you can kind of hear it from behind the dash. Uh, it's a little bit different from the factory setup. Now, if a chime retention module is not used on these later model GMs, you actually lose the turn signal click, uh, which is pretty important. And it does a few other things, of course. Uh, there's no accessory wire on these harnesses, so you do need the chime retention 
or the data module actually to trigger the accessory. Uh, it can also trigger reverse and illumination. We're not using that today since we're not doing a backup cam. And the Alpine 650 does not have illumination wire. 